Hi everyone, thank you for joining me. Do you have any images, either digital or stamps, that you just love? I have a handful that just speak to my heart, and this is one of them. Alex Siberia Designs Gardenia Duo. And this time, done up in pigment powders. This digital image was printed on Canson XL watercolor paper. I increased the size of the overall image so the flower in the background would have more prominence. If you've never played around with pigment powders, they are pretty captivating. For the most part, I'll be working with Nouveau Shimmer Powders, but I will be introducing one very dark color by Ken Oliver's Color Burst called Merlot. These powders are activated by water. They are very concentrated and you do not need very much powder to add colors to sections that you're working on. For this first flower, I'm starting off with a color called Lilac Waterfall. This is going to be just a base coat for a much darker color that I'll introduce later. The pigment powder that I'm using on the second flower is called Cherry Bomb, and that is a perfect description of this color. I have a few tips when working with these powerful pigments so that they don't flood your entire paper. Because these powders are activated by water, that is really the means by which you control them. If water was added to the entire flower and then the powder pigments go on, there would be little distinction between the petals. I'm not saying that that might not be a look that you're going for, but that probably would work better on an image that had been embossed. I'm wanting to control that color so that I can maintain some highlight areas, so I will be working petal by petal. I start off by adding a fairly liberal amount of water to the petal, being careful to stay right within those perimeter lines. I apply the powder directly from the bottle by tapping lightly on the bottom. Where the powder meets the water, that will be the darkest point, the shadow area. Sometimes, but not always, I need to use my watercolor brush just to pull that color right up to the line. This flower has a furled edge. I'm going to tap the powder just a little bit right along the edge of it. I'll use the brush just to pull that color in snug along the furled edge. For the most part, I'm letting the water do the work for me. Because the powdered pigments are activated by water, it pulls that color outwards, and as it does so, the intensity is lessened. I try not to play around with the paint too much with my brush. I use it mainly to get a crisp edge where the shadow areas begin. By letting the water do the work, you get some beautiful texture and tonal variations. Now, if I don't like how things are developing, I will go in with my brush, but not with brush strokes, with little tiny pouncing motions just to move that color around until it's more pleasing. If you don't have a lot of experience with pigment powders, or you're not comfortable tapping the powder out from the bottle, you can put your powder directly onto your work surface. Pick it up with a dampened brush, but be careful not to pick up too much, and then apply it to the area that you're working on, making sure that it is going into a shadow area. As usual, if any of the products that I'm using grab your attention, you can find links in the description of this YouTube video or on my blog at bonniecarolee.com. If you have a situation where there's too much pigment and everything's running together as it is with this petal, I just simply make sure that most of the moisture is out of my brush and then I go in with what's called a thirsty brush and lay it down on the area where I want some highlight and lift the color off. The process petal by petal is straightforward. The area is wetted liberally with water and then the powder is applied. 
In this case, the powder has spilled out into an area where I do not want it. Because the powder is activated by water, if some should stray outside of the perimeter where I'm working, I just blow it off. Now, wouldn't that be awesome if all our problems were solved that easily? As I work on different sections of the flower, I never work on a petal or a leaf that is next to another one that is wet. If I did, the color that I'm applying would be wicked into whatever is next to it. The leaves are done with a combination of falling leaves and green parade. Although painting the individual petals and leaves really does not take a lot of time, what does take time is waiting for things to dry so that you can move on to the sections that are next to it. When painting with the pigment powders, I do not like to use my heat tool. I really want that water to work its magic and pull those pretty tones out. So now that everything is painted and dry, I'm going to go back to the flower that's in the foreground and I'm going to introduce a very deep color called Merlot. For everything else, I use Nouveau Shimmer Powders, but this one is from Ken Oliver's Color Burst line. This is a very rich and dramatic purplish red, just like the name suggests, a delicious red wine. Hints of the lilac from the underpainting still show through the Merlot, and of course, the shimmer from the Nouveau Powders is still maintained. Just like all the other painting, I could only work on petals that were adjacent to those that were dry. As I mentioned before, that is really the most time-consuming part of a project like this. So for this petal, I didn't have quite enough water on there initially. And so as you can see, I am working it a little bit with my brush, but it's not so much pulling the paint as it is adding in water. As I drop water in, I do make little pouncing motions with my brush just to get that paint moving. Because this pigment is so deep, when I'm working on those little flower petals that are in the center of the flower, I do not tap that powder directly out from the bottle onto the petal. I wet the petal as I would normally, but instead I pick up the powder with a damp brush from my work surface and then drop in just a few granules of the powder. With the painting complete, I wasn't entirely happy with the leaves and I really wanted just to lighten them up. To do that, I applied clean water to the entire leaf area and then blotted it with a paper towel. After everything is completely dry, I'm going to apply water to the background. Again, the water goes on fairly liberally, and by that I mean it's got a good sheen to it. A combination of solar flare, which is the yellow, and falling leaves, which is the spring green, will be used to create the background. The floral image will be edged with the solar flare that will give it a glowing effect. The green powder will be dropped into all of the white space. The two colors will blend together. I'll go back and forth between the two powders, adding them in several times, building up the color. I do want the two colors to blend where they meet, but I still want to maintain that glowing effect that the yellow provides. After everything was dry and actually after the entire card was put together, I wanted to just make that background stand out a little bit more. Water was carefully added to the entire background and then I dropped in more of the falling leaves just around the panel's edge. Darkening the perimeter really helped to accentuate that glow. 
Using a small paintbrush, the smaller the brush, the finer the spatter, I applied watered down white gouache. The panel was mounted on white sheet foam. Leaving it to dry under some weight ensures that there's good contact between the paper and the foam. I'm using a die cut sentiment from Simon Says Stamp called Hugs. I've used it to die cut both matte gold cardstock and foam. I like my sentiments to pop off the page, so I'm going to stack it on the foam. I don't remove the foam die cut from its backing. I only take out the centers of the letters. After applying glue to the foam die cut, the cardstock one is popped on top. The foam sentiment will have an impression which makes it very easy to align the gold one. To keep the sentiment aligned, it is important to let the adhesive dry completely before removing the backing. So in the meantime, I'm going to mount my foam backed panel on black cardstock. By the way, the main panel had been die cut with one of the stitch nesting dies from Simon Says Stamp stitched rectangles. I don't want anything to slip out of position, so I let it dry under the weight of my Misty. And then on it goes to a card base, which is top folding and in landscape orientation. To remove the sentiment from the foam backing, I find it helpful to use a craft pick. It is finished up with some gold confetti topped with, yes, it's coming, Nouveau Crystal Drops Morning Dew. I just love the look so much, I can't even stop myself. And that wraps up this card featuring a gorgeous image by Alex Siberia Design Gardenia Duo. I love working with pigment powders. The saturated and intense colors make a bold statement. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you enjoyed the video and as always, I appreciate your visit.